My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Shadows Over Loathing. Oh, was this tentacle pot? Sorry, flower pot. <laughs> What's got into me? Was this flower pot always here? Well, I'm a plant of flower seed. Sorry, tentacle seed. <laughs> Don't know what's gone into me. Into it. And there's your little tentacle body. I'm gonna tickle him. It's your little tentacle body. I'm gonna do it again. And then I'm gonna do it again. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Tentacles. I got an achievement for it. Yeah. I'm speaking your language now, game, aren't I? I get you. I get you. It says, uh, yeah, you gave a tentacle tentacles. That's, that's what the achievement says. <laughs> hey there, Ryan, how'd you sleep? Fine, until a mob guy crawled into my bedroom window. Oh yeah, that window is pretty lousy. Anyway, the next antique I need you to find is on a compass. Is, is a compass. The direction's kind, not the circle's kind. The Detectortron says it's out near Crystal Dream Lake. <gasps> Crystal Dream Lake, Lake, Dream. The other things. <laughs> not drown, not not deep enough to drown dreams. I don't know where that is, but I bet it's too far to walk. Do you have a car I can borrow? No, but I do have something better than that. Two cars? A bus pass. The stop out front is the gateway to the whole world of adventure. You got an item, the bus pass. An unlimited bus pass, good for an entire year. It's truly a ticket to a world of modern convenience and comfort. Swell, thanks. So uh, where do I go to get there? Unfortunately, I couldn't get a more specific reading than near the lake. Something about this place is making the instruments go all skewy. Here's the map. An item. An item that is cursed. That is difficult to get specific readings on. That is adjacent to a lake. I am in mind of Alan Wake right now. And I am ready to try and detect any references. I, I don't know, it, it, it just seems, and the dream as well. There's a lot of wakeness in this, I'm just saying. Alan's up. This is a postcard. It has the map of the lake on it. Yeah, it has a picture of the lake on it. Yeah, that's what a map is, a picture of a place. I guess I can't argue with that logic. Jessica does look pretty busy, but there's a weird feeling over here. It's Murray's desk piled with books and papers. You get a few weird feeling about it for some reason. I'm gonna investigate. Nestled among the books and papers is a book of old, but still valid, postage stamps with a few missing. They're surrounded on the edge. Sorry, they're surrounded with a haze of weird shadowy energy, but you can still see the illustrations of cute dogs on them. Wait a minute, cute dogs? That's like the stamp that to survive your, your luggage fire. Ah, of course. That stamp is what destroyed your luggage. All your best stuff was in there. Your clothes, your teddy bear. That tears it. This shadow business has become personal. I mean, it was personal already because of Murray being your uncle and all, but now it's extra personal. Grrr. Uh, what's up? These stamps, these stamps have shadow gunk on them and one of them killed my luggage. Oh my gosh. I guess that was my fault. I ran out of stamps and I found those inside Murray's desk and I, I, I just didn't think to test them. I'm so sorry. It's not your fault. It's whatever's causing this damn shadow stuff. I'm definitely gonna have to put a stop to it though. Wait, how many of these letters? How many of these stamps have you used? Just the one, thankfully. The rest must have already gone when Murray found them. Oh, well that's good news at least. I'm gonna reinvestigate this uh, this shelf full of books over here. You take a look at the recent bookshelf acquisition. Charles just can't resist the antique bookshelf uh, bookshelf man and his amazing deals. Wow, I can't believe I slept through the antique bookshelf man. All the books are in Latin. Never learned Latin myself, so who knows if it's a history of the Roman Empire we've got there or pornography? It could be both. You know, in Latin, Ryan. We. Ah, that's Latin for little, right? So you know a little Latin? I'm gonna check the books. You select a random book from the Latin language collection. Lorum Ipsum Dolor Sit Armit appears to be about the only graphic design, sorry, appears to be about graphic design in the Holy Roman Empire. 
or typesetting at the absolute least. Hard to imagine that knowledge becoming relevant to your quest, but hey, now you know where to find it. But what's this? You got an item. History's worst honking. An encyclopedia of annoying noises over the ages. Grants a combat skill. Sacks of violence, which deals one physical damage to every enemy every round. That sounds really good. How'd that slip in there? Better take it. Clearly too modern to have any resale value in an antique store anyway. Magna. The Great Carter. Uh, uh, let's... A collection of Latin literature. In an antique store, these things sell like hotcakes. Or Calidum Crustula. <laughs> Crustula. That doesn't sound delectable. Alright, we've got a mes message here, rather. You check the message pad text of the phone, and there is a note for you. Caldanti! With a phone number. I'm gonna call the mob back. You dial the number. Sell you... Patience, with whom am I telephoning, might I inquire? Hi, Don, it's me, Ryan. Ah, you've reciprocated my missive. Commendable. <sighs> yeah, what's up? This is an assignment of which I require your performation. An assignment? Were I the comedic sort, I might refer to it as an undertaking. <laughs> you want me to kill someone? No way! I surmise you will have a few objectifications once I have related to you the details of your targets? That isn't even what objectification means. There is an antique, sorry, an antiquated distillery near Crystal Dream Lake. Grandpa Joe's distillery, to be precocious, it was abandoned when prohibition began, albeit with its liquor manufacturing, manufacturing, manufacturing equipment intact. The group contrapositive to our own has claimed it as their territory, and we wish these bloodsuckers to be evicted with extreme prejudice. Uh, so. What, you want to give the bums rush to a bunch of rival, rival mob goons? There is no underground criminal organization that rivals our own in this vicinity. When I say bloodsuckers, it is my intentioning that you will observe in that phraseology a high degree of literal fullness. The group to which I have referred are Nosferatu. What?! Nosferatu, Langsur, Strigoi, Draculas, va vampires, I get it. You're telling me there's actual vampires in this part of the world? Affirmative. They have been a pain in our necks for quite an extra long, extensive period of time. Oh, I appear to have inadvertently voiced another witticism. I didn't notice. All right, I'll take care of your vampires. I guess it isn't that much weirder than the fishmen. Where's this distillery? Don Toblerone gives you directions to the place. Eventually. Location unlocked, Grandpa Joe's Distillery. Additional to that, you will be requisitioning the combination for the lock. Uh, let me guess. Is it one, two, three, four? Certainly not. S kindly allow us a credit for a modicum of operational securitizing. We selected the most unassailable combination possible. Nine, 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 nine. <sighs> All right, bye. Let's check out that lake. Seems like a good time to me. Nothing behind this still, right? Door to nowhere, yeah, it's still just a brick wall over there. I really wish I had checked my own bedroom in the dream. Unfortunate that we hadn't. Texas Instruments. A blonde flapper cracks her chewing gum and then gives you a sharky grin and a little wave. Hey there, sugar. You're Ryan Ho, right? Depends on who's asking. Oh, look at you being all tough and mysterious. Well, Molly Buttons is asking, sugar. And I do like games, but don't push your luck with me. Uh, okay, you got me. So how do you know my name? The boss sent me the hell into your hand. Yeah, keep an eye on you, savvy? Uh, what? Hey, now, I put in my two weeks notice before I left Poughkeepsie. Fair and square. Huh? Not that boss, you oil can. The boss. The boss? Bruce? You know! She glances over both shoulders, then hisses at you. The mob boss! 
Oh, that the boss! Sheesh, I can't tell if you got a screw loose or you just funnin' with me. I like to keep people guessing. <laughs> it's a good strategy. So what? You gonna partner up with me? That's the deal, McNeil! And do what? What's a 20-something girl like you doing working for the mob anyway? Hey now, I ain't just a pretty face! She pulls a tummy gun from a full, uh, with a full-size drum magazine from behind her Mac, gives it a flip in the air, and catches it with a mad glitter in her eyes. Holy jeez! Tee-hee-hee! Cripes! You have to whisper, the boss. But you're fine with waving a public machine gun around? So are we teaming up or what? <sighs> I've always got room for a gun-toting cutie pie. Oh, you flirting with me? That's real sweet, but I got a sweetheart already, and no offense, she's way cuter than you. Shucks. Well, welcome to the party anyway. Molly has joined you as a companion. Peachy, you want I should come with you now, or cool my heels at the noblesse oblige a while? Wait for me there. All right, but don't forget, it's rude to keep a girl waiting. Every mob Every... Everyone in the mob is vaguely Italian. Or Harley Quinn. Those are the two options. <sighs> That's okay. People were all Scottish a couple episodes ago, and it's been a while since someone was, uh, you know, uh, abruptly and newly Scottish. The shopkeeper gives you a friendly nod. I love the cut of your jib, my Ben. I'm gonna introduce myself. Hi there, I'm Ryan. Well, howdy, Ryan. I'm Dex. Got all manner of portable instruments, musical, perfect for livening up a trip down the old dusty rail, or whiling away an evening at a campfire. Those aren't typical use cases for me, but I do get your drift. Oh yeah? Anything I can show you? Maybe? What have you got? A combat tambourine, a ranged weapon that deals out Moxie plus three in physical damage. That is pretty good for us. The bells on this tambourine have been strategically loosened so they can be launched towards enemies. I'm gonna take that and, wow. Throwing symbol. Also a ranged weapon, also deals out Moxie plus three, and it causes a bleeding. These objects are symbolic of the desire to throw sharp pieces of metal at people you disagree with. Anything else? Ooh, compliment he's playing! It's what I wanted to do as soon as I walked in! Tex, good tootin'. Uh, nice, um, blowing? Nice blowing there, Tex. What, this old tune? Oh, shucks. She's the little infinite loop I've been working on. Still need to put some words to it. So, you any kind of wordsmith? I fancy myself one, yes. Great. Let me show you what I got so far. Oh, somebody stole my niece. I reckon it was. I can't think of a rhyme. Any, any ideas, wordsmith? Uh, let me think. How about... The police? Clarice. No, Reese. Greece. Greece. The country Greece. Some geese. Another niece. A niece in a two-piece. Or some geese in a two-piece. All right. Oh, somebody stole my niece. I reckon it was the police. Like, duh, 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 right? We need three. The police fits the best. Another niece also fits. But you don't rhyme a word with itself. I'm going to go to the police. Whoa, hang on. Let me jot that down. What's next? Oh, I can only write one couple of today, else I have a stroke. Uh, can I see your stock? Absolutely nothing to sell me. So, I have stuff to sell you, though, right, of course. Do I have anything just worth selling exclusively? I thought I did. At least my... At least my fish sack, but at the same time, I don't really need the money right now. So I may as well hold off for just a moment. History's worst honking. Let's get that sax violence. You read the stories of bad honks in the past to resolve a, and resolve to put some good honks into the future to even things out a little bit. 
You got a skill, sacks of violence. Honk your way to victory. Someone has stuffed a few pages of sheet music into the back of the book. It's written in a sloppy hand though, so you'll really have to concentrate if you want to learn anything from it. If you do, sacks of violence will deal two more damage per round. Two more damage per round. So it's doing three damage in AOE per round. That's wild. Crystal Dream Lake postcard. This postcard, this picture postcard of Crystal Dream Leak, Crystal Dream Leak, Crystal Dream Lake rather, is detailed enough to serve as an ersatz map. I'm gonna look at it. Yeah, you're gonna need to take the bus to Crystal Dream Lake before it'll be useful. Vibrations of the Nether Zone, give me my jazz hands. Touching the shaky book makes your hands start shaking in a way that you are surprised to find is really cool. If you held onto it a bit longer, you could probably get your hands shaking even more stylishly. It'd take some effort, though. If you do, Jazz Hands will increase your moxie by two more. This inventor, or rather, Jazz Hands, the inventor of this technique was a guy named Jazz Hands. True story. Excuse me, my own teeth are still out of my head while they are also in my gums. Is there anything else that I need to be reading at this point? Hang on, what did I just say earlier? I said if I get a ranged weapon that deals moxie damage and has three damage, I'm gonna buff it. That's what I said, that's what I said. I'm almost certain of it. I'm gonna add, yep. I'm gonna add two damage to this weapon. Oh, it's already been sharpened. I can't sharpen it again, got it, okay. Four physical damage, one mox, sorry, one bleeding and you know, however high our moxie happens to be at the time, which we can continually increase past this point. I'm not optimized for moxie at the moment. I will be soon. Uh, hot armor to a pair of pants. I mean, I probably want to put that on something that itself already has like a decent amount of hot armor. Seems like a way, way to go with that. I'm gonna take the one, one defense against everything there. Friendship ring, welding glove, welding glove. No, put my stylish sunglasses on, thank you. Uncursed pocket watch. I mean, just seems significantly more powerful than the uncursed, uh, than the unpleasant hymnal rather. Welding mask. Any of these gonna give me some moxie? No, sir. Mr. Callity and some maximum HP? Probably not as important. Honestly, I'll probably just keep my physical and hot armor on from the welding mask here. Okay, so then that means that the only stuff I have to worry about is consumable. Give me my foods. Let me have a look at these. I've only just woken up, so... None of these are active, none of them are moxie. However, I do have a moxie balm here, which I'll use. The 11 in 1 oil, I am well oiled. My movements are now entirely devoid of internal friction. Almost entirely devoid of internal friction. Just because those are significantly different. All right. Complete music's the best music, surely shocking jokes. Ah, here we go. The world's sleaziest jokes, culled from the world's sleaziest toilet stalls. If you can stomach these, there won't be much left in heaven or earth that can scandalize you. I'm gonna be shocked. And Pitt the Elder said, why under the wig of a wig, my dear? <laughs> oh wait, no, that's disgusting. You get 30 experience, you spend 30 experience, sorry. And you got a perk, heard them all. It takes a lot of asterisk, 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 asterisk. It takes a asterisk, 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 asterisk of a lot to make you blush, rather. Plus one sleeves armor. Ooh, there's a little, uh, little filth left to wade through in there later. But it looks like we are currently well equipped for the future. So, checking in with our map of Ocean City. Can you think of any locations here that I should immediately hasten my way over towards? And in fact, if I leave this area, can I come back? Find an urn like the one at Augustus Dirch's house. I believe also my uh, speakeasy wants me to go to Crystal Dream Lake as well, so every other direction is pointing there, save getting an urn. Where would I find an urn? Who, who earns? 
Who toggle? Uh. I mean, we can definitely come back here because Secure Boss obviously is not open yet. So fine. I'm happy to go out on the lamb a little bit. I'm just gonna wander around and location discovered. As you're walking down Ocean City's residential streets on the way to where you're going, you hear eerie music coming from upstairs window of a nearby house. I'm gonna go to the eerie music house. Zimmer's house, I see. This seems like a pretty normal house in a pretty nice neighborhood, but there's something odd about it. Some sort of uncomfortable energy that makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up. Maybe it's something to do with the weird droning tone you can hear from inside, but it's kind of like a pained in human moan constantly rising in pitch. Maybe that's it, yeah. Would you like to stop facing the music? Absolutely not. You knock but hear no response, so you knows your way inside. That eerie sound is even louder in here. It seems to be coming from upstairs. Also, the owner's interior design sensibilities are a little bit strange. Huh? Bunch of books about music theory. Hey, there's one here about jazz. I'm gonna check that out. Intermediate jazz theory, I pour over the book. Intermediate jazz theory gives us plus one to ranged weapon attacks. You've learned that while jazz is often about the notes you don't play, it's also important to play some notes. Soon we will teach this to the Glocklands. A dusty disused chess set. There's also a day stand over there, in case that's important to me. Tea time was long ago, but there's nothing left here but stains. The cabinet is full of backup plates. The plate rack is a statement piece, and the statement is, I have too many plates. A cabinet full of sheet music. I'm gonna examine one of the pieces. You pull out a sheet, but it's in German. Und du kannst keine Deutsche gesprechen. Obviously. You can't speak German. Uh, that door is locked. I gotta find a key for that bad boy before I come back. Probably upstairs if I had to guess. It's a day stand. Oh. Honestly? Significantly less dire than I thought the situation was going to be. A tired looking man is playing a cello here. <gasps> Who are you and why are you in my house? I'm sorry for intruding, but I heard the music and I guess I have an intrusive nature. My name's Ryan Who. Why well, I'm Ernest Simmer. Forgive me for not stopping, but it's vital I continue playing. What are you doing? There is a darkness beneath my house. Did you check the fuse box? No, I... It's probably that then. Listen to me! I had a dream, a premonition, of a dark rift entering my basement and growing until it swallowed my entire house, and then the neighborhood, and then the world! Sounds wonderful. It was not just a dream. I went down to my basement to check out, and indeed there was a rift. As of now, it's still quite small. I gotta keep playing this cello to prevent it from growing any larger. You're wasting your time, pal. Dark rifts in the fabric of reality? I mean, come on, that isn't a real thing. But, but I... Look, we all see weird things in the night sometimes, and they always turn out to be nothing in the morning. There's no shame in it. But you're gonna kill yourself if you, if you keep this up. I'm surprised your arms haven't fallen off already. You, you, you're probably right. I'm so very tired. Just relax, everything's fine. Hi, Ernst. Hello. It's absolutely going to devour the house by the time I go down, right? Uh-oh. Maybe convincing Zimmer to stop playing his cello wasn't such a good idea after all. Whoops. Oh, yes. Hey, Orby, do you have anything to say about this? So why an oboe? Why not, I don't know, a saxophone? The sax is a righteous instrument, but there's just something special about the tone and trill of an oboe. It's like a ray of sunshine coming down from heaven. Wow. Also, it breaks down into a case like the size of a library book. You ever tried to carry a saxophone in a bindle? 
I haven't, buddy. But I will take your word for it. Every one of these moldering books is titled Blood. It would appear that two ghosts are playing a very spirited <laughs> chess of game. Game of chess! Chess of game! And I'm awake today! It's 4 p.m. This chair seems to be having a hard time remaining stationary. A viscous black sludge bubbles in Depot. I'm gonna fish first, and then maybe take some of it later. This isn't tea. You got an item, Eldritch Mist. The world is full of vapors. Some of them are benign, some of them are terrifying. This is the terrifying kind. I'm also gonna take some bubbling black sludge to increase my mysticality by one and my maximum AP by one until I use another potion. That is a very powerful potion. The chair is frighteningly side up. But the plates shatter, and at least the plates have the courtesy to disappear entirely instead of leaving a pile of shards around. Very kind of them. This table has slipped the surly bonds of the floor. Moths have eaten all of the contents and most of the container. A shelf full of trophies from murder competitions. The chair is whispering. I listen. Sit in me. No. He's Ryan. Sit in me. I said no. Sit in me. No. The chair harumphs and goes silent. The chair isn't speaking to you ever again. No. I wanted to sit in that. It's a cabinet full of sheet music. Examine one of the pieces you pull out of sheet. It's a piece entitled All Arbeit and No Spieler Makes Ernst a Dull Boy. All work and no play, I see. This door has seen better jams. Let's go downstairs and check it out. Oh, geez, there sure is a dark rift in space here, just like Simmer was afraid of. Ah, nuts. Everything on this shelf has either evaporated or expired. Boxes of moldy sheet music. All right, I'm gonna check it out. A big hole in, well, in here. I'm gonna step through. Uh, really? Yeah. You find yourself in an infinite black void. Oh, well, it looks like an infinite black void, but you have the uneasy feeling that your brain is only showing you an infinite black void because it doesn't want to actually try and process what this place looks like. It's a weird feeling. I'm gonna look around. Oh, what's up? What's up, my man? Oh. You don't want to get too far from that rift. It would be a real bummer to get stuck in here for all of eternity. So this is definitely uh, things that are being put in place to keep this at bay. This creature is built more or less like a large muscular person. If you built a large muscular person out of just some kind of writhing black ooze and or smoke and or just plain raw darkness. It has a fist sized glowing crystal embedded in its chest, about where its sternum would be. And as you draw near you can feel it radiating invisible waves of energy. Kind of like heat coming off of a radiator. Except also the opposite of that, and also not at all related to that. Look, incomprehensible forces are tricky to describe, okay? The creature shambles back and forth, waving its arms in a way that almost looks like it's dancing, or praying, or maybe just absent-mindedly flailing. It seems oblivious to your presence. Although that will probably change pretty quickly if you try to interfere with it. Like, say, if you tried to pry the glowing crystal out of its chest. I want to size it up. Muzzle. The creature looks as if it could rip you in half without even really trying, and maybe without even really noticing. I'm gonna leave it alone for now. I think that I could dampen these, and that would give me the ability to let it free, and then that would something something whatever. But I think patience is a virtue, and that we will be rewarded for such if I come back when I do have an appropriate amount of 14 muscle in order to pry that from the chest and then return this beast to the mortal realms. Hopefully this leads back to the basement and not, you know, anywhere else it's likely to lead, like deep space or the middle of the sun or 10 feet below the basement or... I'm gonna drift through before the rest of that thought occurs. Hey, Ernst! 
I have bad news about a thing I did. Ah, oh, ghost chair! This chair is barely there. <laughs> Sorry, wait. The day stand has become a night stand. I love it. Hey Ernst, I have bad news. What? What do you mean? Remember how I said everything was fine? I do remember that, yes. Are you now telling me you were incorrect? Yeah, well, let's just say your house is incredibly haunted now. I shouldn't have trusted you, we're both fools. Did the rift open? Uh, yeah? No, what are we gonna do? Don't worry, I'll think of something. And I will be back. Whoa, hang on. Just reminding you that this house has an active dimensional rift in the basement and it might be a real bad idea to leave without fixing that, especially since it's kind of your fault, at least a little bit. I'm gonna stay here, recognizing that maybe that's saying, hey, uh, quest over if you leave. Go do the thing. Fair enough. I didn't have enough muscle to do it. There's no way I was gonna be able to. I dampened the energy. It requires slightly less muscle now. I, I dampen the energies until I have enough muscle to do. I mean, I don't want to loosen all of its bindings. I definitely have at least two muscle. Yeah, three. I'm going to pry the crystal out. You make a quick grab for the crystal, but it's firmly lodged in the creature's chest. The creature howls, and its long, spindly arms flail ineffectually at you. Barely cognizant of your actions, plunge your hand into murky flesh, fingers questing through lukewarm tar until they find ribs, gritting your teeth, forcing open the cage, creaking, cracking, snapping like dry branches. You grab your prize and tear it free of the muck. The creature evaporates in a sigh of smoke. The crystal is both warm and cold in your hand and it has a slight buzzing vibration to it. I absolutely take it with me. Yes. Something tells you this crystal is very important, as well as being really shiny and pretty. Rift crystal. That swell crystal you found inside a rift in Ernst Zimmer's basement. Oh, I see. We can just pluck these again, so we could re-lock them up if we needed. I see, I see, I see. Maybe it wasn't even a lock. Maybe I had entirely misinterpreted this from the very start. It occurs to you that taking the weird crystal out of here might be a bad idea. On the other hand, it's yours now and you prefer to keep it. I want to stay here for a second. What, you want me to smash the crystal? You know, it appears to me that the game has multiple times given me the choice to be like, oh, do you wanna, do you wanna, do you wanna be a, do you wanna be a bad guy? Do you wanna play with the forces? Do you wanna let them take you over? Uh, and pretty much every single time I've said, nah, I'm fine, thanks. I'm just navigating this world. Maybe I should crush the Rift Crystal. But is that the boring choice? Is the only interesting choice to do what the game tells you not? I'm gonna crush the crystal. You pull out a hammer out of your inventory, or if you don't actually have a hammer, whatever object would be most hammer adjacent, and give the crystal a solid thwack. It makes it sound like a baby being torn in half and bursts into glittering shards that shoot off into the darkness. Immediately you feel well, I was gonna say a massive earthquake, but since you aren't standing on the ground, you wouldn't feel that. It's more of a everything quake. You should probably get out of here. Uh-oh. You dive back through the rift just before it collapses, slash vanishes, slash heals. Thankfully, you find yourself in Earth Zimmer's basement, not some kind of horrible between dimensions purgatory. Is this a, is this a direct reference to, to control? The speech of the of, of the board and the, the directors in general being this slash this slash this. 
finding your way into a horrible between dimensions purgatory. I mean, fits a little. You run up the stairs and tell Ernst the good news. Ernst is looking pretty nervous about the whole situation. I fixed it! I closed the rift! You did? That's wonderful! I owe you my life and probably also my house's life. Here, take this cello. I have no further need of it. And to be frank with you, the thought of playing it ever again only pains me. You get Zimmer's cello. Zimmer's cello is a melee weapon. Well, technically it's whose cello now. But you have no idea how to play the cello. Though you do know how to swing a big club. Deals three muscle plus physical damage and 10 experience having done so. And it gives us a relieved nod. It's our time to leave. It's a day stand again, hell yeah. I really want to sit on this chair now, but apparently I am not allowed. That was a one-time offer. Actually, hang on, can I now go back down to the basement again? And then, no rift? Dang, apparently not. No rift would have allowed me to travel as far left as possible on that screen, which is of course always one of my objectives. Get the hell out of here, where are we even going? Honestly, at this point, Plunkett Street? I'm going to say I'm sorry and no to the person who asked me if I have a match here, giving them two lies. Ah, well, all the same. Toodle up. I'm going to toodle off. I don't know what the correct answer there apparently is. I do know that we can take the bus to Crystal Dream Lake. Which I really want to do at the top of the next episode. So I'm just going to wander around like... And a couple more times to see if I unlock a new thing. I'm also selling you a paperclip. Yeah, sure, I could use a paperclip. Absolutely. Uh, sure, I can busk a little as well, get some money. I'm gonna shove past them for some experience. Club, club, club. Operator! Operator! Uh, join in and then ignore. I mean, all of these look like they are infinitely repeatable kinds of things occurring. Wait, hang on. Not, nothing hovers towards you. I mean, something hovers towards you, but that something is literally nothing. Wait, hang on, let me try that again. A thing that appears to be a hole in physical space, the opposite of not just matter, but of existence, hovers towards you. Though through it, you can see the faint twinkling lights of ancient dying stars, and the black smoke drifting out of it appears to be more of itself, more nothingness. Or perhaps anti-thingness leaking into this world. Is that a better description? I think I'll have to do. Oh, here comes another one. Absolutely fight these things. Shadowy orbs. They have spooky armor, but not much else. I can cut through y'all. I'm gonna give an orchestra strike to that shadowy orb, but then my single weapon attack. Excuse me, do I not have any moxie at the moment? I have four moxie? What is thought I had higher mox than that. The four hot damage that we can do, however, will get us there. Excellent. It's shall we all for four physical damage and cause, wait, four physical damage and causes one bleeding. That's not what this weapon's supposed to do. Ah. Uh, Shadowy Orb cannot take more than four physical damage at a time. That's... that's... Yeah, I probably should have read what the enemy did. Might have, might have helped that make sense. I get five experience and Gideon the Finch grows stronger as a result of that. Plus one to all stats for Gideon there. Uh, I'm gonna tell you... Uh, no. Alright. You can come back and try and sell it to me again? You round a street corner and encounter a woman in a welding mask using tightly focused magical fire to cut the fenders off of a parked car. Hey, isn't, isn't that, I'm pretty sure that isn't your car. There's a polite cough behind you and you turn around to see a muscular woman in oil stained coveralls casually flipping a large wrench in one hand. Is this your car? Uh, yes? No it ain't, and it ain't your business neither. So we should maybe teach you a little lesson about minding your business. You just said it's not mine. I'm gonna bamboozle her. Listen, you gals are going all about this wrong. 
You'll need much more useful parts off of this jalopy if you take it back to your garage first, instead of trying to strip it quick and dirty on the street before a cop shows up. Huh? Uh, yeah, we usually do, but not why Nancy's visiting a mod today. Good thing you met me then. You two go on ahead and I'll get your and get your tools ready. I'll get the car there for you. You? What are you gonna do about it? It just so happens I know a guy who both owes me a favor and owns a record truck. Play your cards right, and maybe you can know that guy too. Huh, well, all it takes is a phone call. Here, let me a wrench, in case the old fliver objects to the tow hook. The two of them puzzle over your cool grin for a moment and shrug at each other. All right, we'll go unlock the garage door, but don't take all day. She tosses you the wrench, and two of them head off down the street. I get their gun, but I wonder, does that unlock something in the chop shop, perhaps? It's not like there's a garage here, right? Well, I apparently can't go fishing. And get a little bit of face grease. Oh, is it every day I can re uh, revisit all of the fishing spots? Hand washing gasoline, excellent. Face grease is actually very, very valuable as well. A lot of hot armor from that thing. Alright, Big Liz, I still don't know what I want from you. I just thought it was possible that if I came here, I would see a new thing. Because of that interaction with the Tin Lizzie's prior, I am going to do one more wandering. After this one, because I've seen that one before. Operator! Remember when I said one, and then I didn't do that? You surrender, and they break your ribs. They have taken some of our muscle, which we will need to regain at the top of the next episode. But until then... I should actually get myself a location one second. There we go. Until then, my name is Merapsity. The name of the game has been Shadows Over Loathing. Top left, series playlist, YouTube recommendation down below, stream pass, other names of people so generally supporting the Republic on Patreon.com slash Rhapsody plays. Add above the thank to and a special thanks this episode to Eloise. Hopefully you'll be enjoying yourselves and hopefully see you all next time.